Let's go five. And let's do one thing. Oh, we are live. Sorry, guys, for the last minute camera adjustment. Oh, no, I forgot my mic. Hold on, please. It's been one of those days. Oh, my gosh. I forgot my mic. I forgot my mic. I forgot my mic. Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I forgot my mic. And look at this mic. <laughs> Oh my goodness! I'm gonna hop over here. It's live, right? It's live. I'll tell you what happened. Like, oh my, look at, oh my goodness, who did that? Uh oh, uh oh. So let's see if it works. Okay, guys, we're getting back to business. Sorry about that. Hi, Bruno. It's Bruno. It's 4:30, so we're right on the money. We're here. We're here. How is the sound that this thing is like split in half? Who did that? Who did that? Oh my goodness. Yay, we're here, we're here. Hi guys. Okay, let me get on to here so I can see who's here and see what's going on. I'm so excited to see all of you. Thank you for coming. So we've got the puff man right here eating something. It's my secret weapon for getting birdies to eat pellets, right? I'll tell you what that is in a moment. Here's Baby. He's going to be eating probably the whole stream. And Thomas. Hi. Hi, Thomas. How are you? You good? You good? What? So he's molting, so he might be a little grumpy. Victoria Cockatoos back there eating. Casey's hiding from all the excitement. Quinn is in the back in the cage so we don't have any more fights. And Maui is locked up today. We had a little fight, right? Yeah? 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 So he's locked up right now. He's eating. He's happy. Don't worry about it. He's just fine. Okay, so who's here? Oh, a super chat. What? Wyoming, thank you so much for the super chat. We love super chats because it helps us. Well, it helps the birds. Yeah, it goes to you. It goes to you. Yeah. So I'm so excited about this video, and I'm so excited that you guys have taken 30 minutes out of your day today on Monday. Just want to thank all the veterans out there, right? Thank you for everything that you do for us to keep us safe and everything that you've done. Like, we just love you, but that you've taken 30 minutes out of your day to come here and learn and improve your bird care. And that gives me hope for the future. That makes me so happy. And so here we go. Who's here? Who's here? Animal lovers here. Pamela is here from Canada. Oh my goodness. Jennifer is here. Sherry from Parrot Town is here. TV for Birds, you guys. If you haven't watched it, it's TV for Birds. Bur uh, birds have actually made it and it's for birds, right? So it's awesome. Chelsea's here. Maddie's here. Jill. I see a lot of new faces here. Mikio, SRR founder, is here. Hi, Mikio. Love of the birds here. Oh, there's just, it's the shadow bird. A lot of wonderful Etsy. Hi, Etsy. A lot of wonderful people are here to improve their birds' lives. So today's, I almost said today's, today's stream is on how to get those delicate rain, uh, rainforest flowers off of seed and onto pellets, right? It's something that many of us deal with, and it's something that I deal with all the time in rescue. I get a lot of birds that come in, and they have been fed seed. And yesterday I was on the phone, and there's going to be a bird. You guys are probably going to be seeing a video soon. If everything goes well, I have a bird that has been fed Cheetos and graham crackers for many years, and he should weigh about 450 grams, and he's 900 grams. So it's pretty sad stuff. But honestly, what happened was he was with somebody who's elderly, right? And you birds live a long time, and this bird is in his 50s. And this person loved, loved, loved his bird, but 
you know, we age and things happen and it's good to plan for the future, but not all of us, like it's hard to find good homes for our birds because they live so long, right? Hey, 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 stop. Stop. This is why birds are rehomed. So yes, yeah, so diet is important. And when birds are fed seed and graham crackers, they're low in vitamin A. And when a bird is low in vitamin A, all kinds of bad things can happen. It affects their immune system. They have breathing issues. And I was talking to somebody also last, yesterday who said that the bird that she got was actually on seat as well. And my videos inspired her to make an appointment for her bird. And she's taking good care of her little guy and she's doing her best to wean him off of seed onto pellets. So this video is not to promote a specific, a specific pellet brand, right? I don't know your birds. I haven't seen their blood work, um, but these are the brands that I use. I use Harrison's. I use Kai Tech. Hey, he's biting me right now, so I'm trying to ignore it, and it hurts. Okay, so I use Kai Tech, and this is Kai Tech. This is probably one of the easiest pellets to wean a bird over to, and it smells like cinnamon. It's awesome. And when I rescued Victoria Cockatoo when she came here, um, she she wasn't fed much of anything. She was basically starved. Um, and her organs were shutting down. She was emaciated. She was in bad shape. That was over four years ago. Um, she took to these right away. I think she was just happy to have food, right? So when you're weaning a bird over, there's different ways you can do it. And whatever you do when you're weaning a bird, you have to have a scale. Because what happens is if a bird is in a new environment or when you're changing the food, it causes a lot of stress. And if you're dealing with a seed junkie who hasn't had good nutrition and is low in vitamin A, that means your immune system is going to be low and going to be stressed if there's any changes. And what's wrong, hun? What's wrong? And if you take food away, food that the bird is familiar with away, it causes a lot of stress. And I've seen that in rescue. What? You want to say hi? And this was a peanut junkie. He was living on peanuts, this one. So when peanuts are bad for birds, right? So it was really quite a challenge weaning Thomas off of peanuts and on to the good stuff, which took time. I didn't do it overnight. So when you guys are doing this, make sure you're weighing your birds every day because birds will trick you. They'll look like they're eating the pellets. Did Victoria just take off? Oh, there she goes. She's on the ground. So we got to watch her. You guys see her go anywhere. Let me know. Okay. And so wait, where was I? Bueno, no, it's not bueno. Victoria's on the ground. You want to be very careful how you do it. So, and you want to weigh every day. That's what I'm going to say. This is a live video, you guys. Anything can happen and Victoria's eating off the ground. So the first thing that I'm going to use is Christine's Chop Shop. And so Christine's Chop Shop makes this awesome birdie bread and it comes like this. And I don't get any promotions, nothing from any of these products, um, except for if you go to my Amazon store, I get a little bit. But so I... I'm showing you guys these products because I love, love, love these products. And so here's a little bit of the birdie bread. So what I do with the birdie bread, I will sneak pellet powder into the birdie bread. Do you see this? Let me show you. What I like about this birdie bread is it's vegan. There's no eggs in it, no animal products in it right? And so when you're dealing with a sea junkie, you're dealing with a bird, there's a good chance they've got fatty liver disease or the beginnings of it or congestive heart failure, which many of you saw that I dealt with when I adopted Bailey, um, the Kaik. She came to me, at, it was like age 22, I think, and she was fed seed her whole life. She was loved her whole life. But her owner was elderly and could no longer take care of her. So Bailey came here and Bailey got off the seed, which she was fiery and she was mad at me. She would actually attack me. But so what I've done is I have this grinder. So this is a coffee grinder designated just for pellets because coffee is toxic for birds. And so I've already grinded it up and then I'm going to show you. So I'm going to show you the powder. There's going to be a lot of walking back and forth. Do you see that? This is, this is how you do it, you guys. Stick whatever pellet you want in there. 
And like I said, I have not, I don't know your birds. I haven't seen their blood work. And the only way to see what your bird needs is to take them to an avian vet. And I know some of you do not have access to the avian vet. So you have to do your best. And a lot of you do your best and see what they are missing. And the blood work will tell you everything and it'll tell no lies. And that's why I know that this right here that my avian vet and I have picked for my birds is working because everybody's blood work works looks amazing. So when I'm making the chop shop, I'll sprinkle the pellet powder into the bread. And this is the one that I'm using. So I use the high potency course from Harrison's. I love it. I love it. And that's what it looks like. They're really good. Casey loves them. And so that's what I stick in my grinder. And then I'll also make them, and that's what baby's eating right now. I make this, uh, it's vegetables. This one has a little bit of brown rice, barley. And I have the link for the video below. It's like how to make squash. And so what I'll do is I'll stick a little bit of that pellet powder, just like that. And I'll just stick it in there and I'll add more and more. And that's how you get your birds used to the good stuff. And that's how you get healthy food into your birds. And this is what they get at night. And it's so delicious and it's so good. So we've covered, we've got the birdie bread. And if you guys have your own recipes of birdie bread, um, that's healthy for your birds. Awesome. Stick that pellet powder in there, the pellet powder of your choice. And then, so then we've got your hot food, or if you've got a uh, chop, you can put that into the chop. Just know you can't let it sit for too long, right? Because if it does, it'll grow bacteria. So that's about three hours. And then, well, let me see. I want to see what you guys are saying so far before we go any further. Yes, veterans, thank you. Yes, Puff Man helping out. Yes, he is. He's always helping out. All right, I don't see. Yes, Angel Frank, seeds cause serious liver problems. And it's what many rescues see when we take in these birds. That's the number one thing they've got. And it could, you could reverse it, but to a point, but sometimes when it happens, it's bad. So look at, see, Puffy is eating the Christine's Chop Shop birdie bread, and the link is below for the Christine's Chop Shop birdie bread. So another way I do it is on the skewer. And so if your bird has been on seed, it needs vitamin A. And vitamin A is in pumpkins. Vitamin A, so this is organic pumpkin. So this is canned pumpkin. You can mix that into their food as well, loaded with vitamin A, right? And then this is a little skewer. All right, we have these at our Amazon store, but we have the long ones. I haven't been able to find these round ones anymore, but the long ones work really well. So I have yellow squash, which is loaded with vitamin A, right? I've got a red bell pepper, carrot. And so what I'll do is I will open the pepper. Do you see that? I'll open the pepper and I'll stick the birdie bread in the pepper with the pellets. Now, this is when you are make, helping your bird to adjust over. And this is what I do. I literally try everything and then I'll put a little bit of pellet powder in there, right? And then we have a banana. So what you can do with the banana, this is organic and that's why the pill is on it and I've washed it. So don't worry, I got it covered. So you can sprinkle a little bit of the pellet powder onto the banana. So it's basically finding out what your birds love and then using that pellet powder on everything. Now, I don't actually have seed in the bird room, but for those of you, this is how you're going to start out when you got a seed junkie. You're gonna grab some purified water, right? And I don't want you using a spray bottle because spray bottles can carry bacteria and they, it grows pretty quick. And we're gonna spray this on the actual seed. So let's pretend that this is seed, right? So you're gonna get your seed. You're gonna put a little bit of water down like that, right? And then you're gonna grab your pellet powder and then you're gonna sprinkle it on the seed and mix it around. Now, another choice would be to use, to use is the high potency super fine by Harrison's or anything that's super fine that your avian vet recommends. 
um, after the blood work, right? And so this is what it looks like. I don't start out with this at first because this starts, this is a little advanced for when you're weaning your bird over. Do you see that? Okay, so these are small little gradules. And what you do is, so you can also, once they start becoming more advanced, you can sprinkle it on to the food as well. So that one is a little bit bigger and every bird is different. I am seeing cockatoos, which will not eat big pellets, but they'll eat small little pellets. So it just depends on the bird and what they like. So I also like to use, and I wanna show you, this is what my pellets look like in the morning. This is how it looks like when I feed my birds. And that's another question I'm sure you guys wanna know is, how much I feed my birds in the morning. So this is what I give them. Victoria, I actually give her way more because she is a rescue bird and she has anxiety because she was almost starved to death about food. So I actually load her up. So I've got the Higgins in here and the Higgins, I know I'm going to give you some in just a second. Do you see baby wants his pellets? Hold on. Let me show them, dude. Let me show them. Wait, no, wait, wait. Wait, wait, let me show them, please. Do you see that? So that's the Higgins in tune and it has color in it. And I like Higgins because, because it has a little color and it's colored with vegetable dye. So it's not like red dye 40. And this is something you wanna watch out when you're choosing a pellet. You do not want to give your birds anything with artificial colors, especially if you have like an eclectus. Those birds are so sensitive to colors and they'll actually pluck. It, it really irritates their skin. So I like the Higgins because when you're a, bringing a, a sea junkie into the pellet world, these guys are attracted to colors and it's colorful and it tastes good. And baby's eating it right now when he has the choice of all kinds of stuff. He's not wasting any time. And then also in there, I had three pieces of quinoa pasta. I like to make it fun. This is what they get in the morning. And then I had unsweetened organic shredded coconut. So I like to put a little bit of that in there as well. And I have like three different types of pellets in there. So I just don't focus on one pellet in here. I like my birds to have variety. They deserve to make their own choices to a certain point, right? These guys have the intelligence to up to a three to five year old, and they should be allowed to pick what they want to eat, I think, right? So that's what I do. And I have to say the favorite in here is the Kai Tech. It's like, they love it. And it actually has cinnamon in it. And cinnamon is also an antibacterial. And that's another reason why I love the Kai Tech as well. So it just helps to keep your birds healthy and their blood work looks amazing. So I want to show you. So when I weigh my birds, I have a journal and this is so important. You guys, number one, never stress your birds out when you're doing this. Cause this is scary. Just imagine somebody that's addicted to McDonald's or fast food or even Starbucks. Right. And then all of a sudden they end up in a different environment. We're in there. The, hey, stop, stop you guys. Whoa. And all of a sudden, things are taken away. It's terrifying. It has to be really, really scary. So this is something that takes a long time to do. A bird might transition overnight where a bird might take, like Thomas, two years to make that transition. So, and also it's trying different pellets. Your bird might not like one pellet, right? And might like a different pellet. So when you're weighing a bird, Puffy is really spicy right now. Like, oh, Puffy. Well, he already has food. But what I would do, do you wanna come here? Do you wanna come here? I like to put them on the scale. So we put them on the scale. And you always give them a reward, but there's too much rewards happening here. So I don't even know what we could offer him because he's already. So what you do is you look at your bird's weight. Baby is 484 right now. You document it because you're going to forget, right? If you got a gazillion birds like I do. And then you put that in the journal or you have like a whiteboard in your bird room this bird weighed this much. That way you can really keep track of the weight because we don't want to starve any birds to death. 
because I've seen it. People, you won't believe what happens. Okay, don't, no, there's a blade in there. I, he loves the pellet powder. He just bit me. This is, it's, this is what's been going on all day today. So he's been, you know, he's a kayak, you guys. He's a wild animal. And these birds, you know, they, they bite, they scream, and things happen. So I'm going to put him down. His eyes are dilating. He's giving me all kinds of warning sounds that he's going to, okay, there we go. Good. So normally when he's like this, I would give him space, but we're filming right now. And he seems to be doing okay, but I'm not going to push him. He's really curious. So, all right, guys, let me look at your questions. No, let me look at your questions. Let's see what you have to say, what you're saying about us. Where do I get the Kitech? Good question. So we have it at our Amazon store, and it's spelled uh, C-A-I-T-E-C. -E so we have it at our Amazon store. Or you can go directly to Kitech Corporation on Google, just type that in, and you'll get it directly from the manufacturer. So when it comes directly from the manufacturer, it takes a little bit more time, but you know it's super fresh, right? So that's also a huge option. So that's C-A-I-T-E-C -E Corporation. And they have sizes for the little guys, uh, cockatiels, then they have the medium size. I like to get the macaw size for all my birds. They love it. They look really cute holding those chunks. Okay, so Shadow Burr. Also, I do not know what my cockatiel would like because she is fussy, very picky with her food. So what do I do? Yeah, cockatiels are really picky. So another, but they're also flock birds, right? So if they, and you guys are their flock. So if your birds see you pretend eating the pellets, right? It's going to really encourage, encourage them to eat the pellets as well. This is really important. Birds when they're in the wild, they're with their parents for a long time and their parents are teaching them everything. And these birds in captivity have basically been taught nothing. And that's another reason why there's so many behavioral problems, health issues, because they haven't been brought up properly. So you want to show them that it's good. You want to eat it in front of them. But whatever you do, you guys, don't feed your birds out of your mouths. I've seen even YouTubers do that. I don't know what that's about. It's like they think it's going to bond their bird together. Like we've got gram negative bacteria. We've got serious bacteria that these delicate rainforest flowers can't fight off. And if you are transitioning a bird, they're going to be a little stressed during this process. And then if you give them your germs, which you shouldn't, it's going to cause some problems. You're going to end up with a really sick bird. So never Puffy's going to poop on things. Never feed your birds out of your mouths or share drinks with them. Okay. But that's what I would suggest. Or it's great in here when a new bird arrives because all these birds eat pellets. Look at baby. He's not wasting any time. And so the new birds get to watch the older birds doing this. There's Casey. Do you see Casey? There she is. She's right there. I'm just, I, I don't force her to come out. I just let Casey do her thing. And so she's down there. She's watching us. So she's so smart. And she loves Harrison. So I, it just makes me so happy. A rowdy bush, a rowdy bush is good as well. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right. Bad germs. Yep. Bad, bad germs. Why would anyone want to feed your bird from the mouth? It is beyond gross. You know, I, I've seen it more than once. And I went and did a... a an intake inspection on a bird one time. And this is what this man even showed me. He's like, this is what I do every night with my bird. And he had an almond. So I figured, okay, he's going to give the bird an almond. He stuck it in his mouth and fed it to his bird. Unfortunately, that bird did die uh, three months um, after that. I think it was just, a, uh, I don't know. It, it was really unfortunate. So, but he honestly thought that it was like a bonding thing to make him closer. He wasn't doing it to be mean. He, he, he thought it was okay. And that's why education is so important, right? So we can learn these things and know it's not okay. Um, and that's why you guys are here. And Puffy, don't chew on the mic. He's biting again. All right. He's going to chew on the mic. So I'm going to put him down. Not make a big deal about it. All right.
Okay, Harrison pellets have peanuts in them. Yes, they do. So it's human grade peanuts and birds do need fat. Are you gonna poop? Man, that was a production. Birds do need fat. And so these are human grade peanuts and they have all kinds of other good, good ingredients in this. And this is usually a go-to for uh, when avian veterinarians are referring pellets. And the blood work, like I said, you guys, is amazing when birds are on this type of pellet. And they have uh, different types of pellet, pellets that have more fat, pellets that are for older birds. Here comes Maui. I got to be very careful because we had a little bit of a fight between him and Thomas today. So they do customize it for your birds. So, but like I said, this is not where I'm promoting pellets. I don't want to get in a pellet war, but it's what I use and it works for my guys. So it, it's just, I, I love them. I love them. All right. That was a good question. Thank you for that. Okay. So here we go. Easy on the emojis. YouTube is punishing channels. Oh, okay. So really? Gosh, YouTube. They are always baby. Don't do it. Okay. Do we have any more questions, you guys? Any more questions? I don't eat them. Let's see. I want to see what else. Do you guys have any questions about your birds having to wean them off of seed? Maui doesn't even know what to do about that. The message is held for review. Okay, so we're having some problems. All right. Sherry from Parrot Town will take care of whatever's going on. All right. So, but yeah, so that's basically, oh, okay. How do you spell Kitek palette? C-A-I-T-E-C. -E That's how you spell it. All right. Okay. Tops. Do you like tops? You know, I haven't had luck with tops in here. It has a, oh, it has a lot of alfalfa in it. And so what worries me about when, you, so regardless what you do, you want to feed your birds a well-rounded diet, right? In the wild, birds get a lot of moisture. They're eating fruit. They, they, they're they always taking in a lot of moisture, and so pellets are dry. And there is a study going on right now where the, you see it in cockatoos, and you're going to see it in my video coming up on Thursday of a cockatoo that's actually dying from a prolapse, which is basically their insides start coming out of their bottom. And part of it is due to not getting enough moisture in their diet, and that is starting, it's starting to look like that. So a lot of people that just feed their birds pellets, that's something that is definitely worrisome. So whatever you do, you want to make sure that your bird is getting plenty of vegetables. The vegetables are number one. Fruit are number two. In the springtime, when birds are hormonal, you want to do more vegetables, way more vegetables and less fruit because fruit has sugar and it increases those hormones. It increases um, undesirable behavior and it also can increase bacteria in their poop equali. And during that time, birds are really stressed. So you want to kind of hold off a little bit on the fruit, but you definitely want to feed a lot of vitamin A, bell peppers, a lot of juicy vegetables, right? And no tomatoes. So where was I going with this? Yes. So that is why when you feed pellets, you really want to discuss it with your vet, the amount. Here, my birds have pellets all day long. I just keep it in the bowls, but they're getting the hot food, as you saw here. They're getting fruits and vegetables in the morning. I give them as much as they want, lots of carrots. I just load their bowls up and they pick what they want. So that is so important. And what worries me about Pellets that have a lot of alfalfa, it sucks up a lot of the moisture. So, and then my birds just, they just don't like them. So I let my birds choose as long as I know it's a good pellet and their blood work looks good. And they have made their decision in here and they like the Harrison's in tune. They like the Kitek and they like, oh, his Higgins in tune and the Harrison's and the Kitek. So those are the three that they love. But yes, you guys will be seeing a video and it's about a cockatoo and a prolapse. And he's actually, he's dying. He's, he's not going to make it. And the way they deal with those prolapses is they push the insides of the bird that have come out back in and they sew them 
And this is why they don't, you know, birds don't belong in captivity. So there's things like this that happen. Thank you for that super chat, Wyoming. Oh my gosh, another one. Thank you so much. That is so sweet. But he's actually, if it opens up one more time, he's probably going to lose his battle. And he is a rescue bird. He's at the Chloe Sanctuary. So you guys will get to see that video on Thursday. It'll be sad, but it's going to be very educational. And there's some happy times. And he's super happy right now, right? But he is battling with it. And a lot of birds battle with that. Cockatiels, and I see it in sun conures, and I see it a lot in cockatoos as well. Yes, poor baby. I know, it, the reality of captive birds, it's, it's sad because they live so long. And it's really hard to, we try to give them the best, but it's so hard to give them what they should be having out there, right? Uh, foraging, finding their own food. They know what they need. They know what their bodies need. And, but that's why it's so important that we take our birds to get blood work because that gives us guidance to what pellets to choose if our birds need more, uh, if they need a certain vitamin and Maui's going to go for a cord. And that's why I don't like to give birds, you know, uh, different things, uh, minerals, like whatever, unless my vet says, this is what's missing. This is what you need to do. So you guys, my goodness, the time has gone so fast, so fast, so fast. And I see some people and you know what? Tops, I'm sure is an excellent pellet. So if your birds are on it and they're eating it, that is fantastic. The most important thing though, is to give your birds a well-rounded diet. And so that means fruits, vegetables, pellets are great, but they don't take care of everything. And it's like us, when we go to the doctors, if we're not feeling well, we get blood work. Our doctor looks at our blood work and says, hey, you're missing this. I see this all the time with my clients. I'm a hairdresser. They start losing their hair and it's like, okay, why is it your thyroid? Are, are you missing something in your diet? And so it usually, it starts in the hair. You see it in the hair. You'll see things happen in their feathers and poop. And that gives us a warning that it's probably time to go in and get some blood work and start figuring out the mystery to making us and our birds feel better, right? So we need blood work. Our birds need blood work. Blood work is the key to figuring out what's going on with our guys. It helps. It doesn't, it doesn't always help us get to the root of the problem, but it really gives you a good place to start, right? Okay, guys, do you have any more questions? Any more questions? How boring to just eat pellets. I know, right? And there's so many other good things out there to eat. So a little bit of everything, you guys, a little bit of everything. And that's why, you know, these pellets are great, but they're not the whole thing what my birds are eating. So make it exciting. Watch the squash video below if you want to learn how to make the hot food. And it, it's just all we can do is our best. We will never replace Mother Nature, right? We will never replace the trees and the sky and what they get in the wild. But they're here and we, we can do our best and we can learn. And that's why I'm so proud of all of you that you're here today. Okay, so I have five bungees. What should I feed the mother to help her health? She's looking so poor. I feed her seeds, pellets, fruits, and veggies, but she still looks looking poor. Could she be molting right now? You know, I don't know. It sounds like you're doing a good job. The next step would be looking at the poop and probably seeing a doctor. That's what I would recommend with that. And it's so good that you're being observant about your bird. I love that. So I just want to show you guys, I'm wearing another Save a Parrot shirt today. So they're going to be coming soon. You'll all be able to buy them. Look at that. It's great. You know, it's truly what I believe in saving one bird at a time. And we're so happy that you're here. And thank you so much for the super chats. I can't thank you enough. And if you have any more questions of what to feed your birds or anything, you could put it in the description below or in the comment page, in the comment page after the stream's done processing. All right, guys. We love you. Thank you for watching. And um, we'll see you later. Bye. Yay.
Here we go. Yay. Good job, babies. Good job.